The machines you are seeing are doing work. To do their work, they need energy. A simple definition of energy is the ability to do work. Most of the energy in an industrial country is obtained by burning something we call fuel. There are many fuels available to us. Food is a fuel. Wood is a fuel. Coal and oil are fuels. This power shovel gets the energy to dig up a street by burning fuel. In this case, diesel oil. This man gets the energy to plow a field by burning fuel too. In his case, the food he ate for breakfast. This woman washes her clothes by hand. This girl walks to school instead of riding a school bus. In an agricultural society like this one, the most important fuel is food, because most of the work in an agricultural society is done by people instead of by machines. In an industrial society, people use machines like this thresher to help them do their work. The thresher burns diesel fuel and can process more grain in one day than a farmer could handle in a week by himself. This makes it possible for the rest of the people to do other kinds of work. If you walk down any city street in the United States, you can see work being done by machines that use energy. people have decided to live using only simple forms of energy. If you've ever been on a camping trip, you know a little bit about this way of life. Instead of electricity or oil, your main fuel is wood, and you have to chop it yourself, and use it to build the fire that cooks your supper. Once in a while, it's fun to get away from all the machines that usually help us do our work. But what if you got sick or broke your leg on a camping trip? then you would be very glad you live in a society that uses a lot of energy to run machines which can bring help fast, not only in an emergency, but in your everyday life. To help you make your breakfast, for instance, with an electric juicer. Or a gas stove. take you on a downtown shopping trip in a diesel-fueled bus. Or bring you home from school in a car that runs on gas. To help you do your homework in the evening when it's dark. And to wash your clothes while you're watching television. The more energy helps us, the more we have come to rely on it so that we are now unable to live without it. Think what your life would be like without energy. The television and radio that tell us what's going on in the world would be cut off. The printing presses that turn out our daily newspapers would stop rolling, and the thousands of people who work on them would be out of work. In fact, if you suddenly completely cut off the supply of energy, millions and millions of people would be out of work either because they use energy-consuming machines to do their jobs, like a tomato crusher, or a tape recorder, a telephone, or a jackhammer, or because they use energy-consuming machines to get to their jobs, in cars, on subways, and in taxis. We'd be out of work, and would be out of play, too. Ski lifts use energy. Snowmobiles require fuel, and so do motorboats. Finally, our basic body fuel would be affected. Factories that process food would close, 
and the trucks that distribute the food around the country could not move without the diesel fuel which their engines convert into energy. Put a sudden end to energy supply, and in a few days you'd have 200 million people living with no heat or light, no jobs, and finally, no food. Our whole society would come to a standstill. In reality, it wouldn't happen that fast. But little by little, it could happen if we use energy thoughtlessly and without planning intelligently for the future. Where does all this energy come from? A lot of it travels over thousands of copper wires and ends up as electricity in our homes, schools, and offices. The power plants that make electricity all work in the same way. They use energy to turn turbines like these and activate generators which send electricity traveling down the wires. The energy to power these plants comes from a number of different sources. The cleanest and most efficient is the power of falling water. Niagara Falls, on the border between the United States and Canada, can generate over four million kilowatts of electricity. But for one thing, there are a limited number of places where dams like this one can be built. And for another, when a river is dammed up, the water behind it rises and floods thousands of acres of land, destroying the plant and animal life in the surrounding area. So, hydropower can never supply all the electricity we need, and we must turn to other sources of energy, mainly fossil fuels, coal and oil. These are called depletable resources, because sooner or later we will run out of them. In just one year, the United States burns up almost 600 million tons of coal. Some geologists say we probably have enough reserves to last us 300 years. But coal has a lot of disadvantages. When it's buried deep in the earth, digging it out is dangerous work. Close to 50,000 men have been killed in mine accidents in the United States in this century alone. It's heavy and dirty and difficult to move around. And when it's burned as a fuel, it spews out quantities of polluting dirt called fly ash and a smelly gas called sulfur dioxide. Anti-pollution devices can counteract these effects, but they cost money. And all these drawbacks have meant that we have chosen to use less and less coal and more and more oil. Oil has disadvantages too. The main one is that in the United States, we are running out of it. Oil rigs like this one work night and day to pump the oil we need up out of the ground. But sooner or later, this well will run dry. Geologists say that in the United States, we may be out of oil in less than 50 years. Storage tanks, tanker trucks, and refineries like this one are now processing and distributing oil from foreign countries as well as the United States. In the next 10 years, we will use more oil than all the oil we used in the 100 years since the first well was drilled. One of the main reasons for this is the automobile. Our lives now revolve around a full tank of reasonably priced gasoline. Americans travel more than ever before, and they do most of their traveling in private cars. There are over 100 million automobiles on our highways. They all need gasoline. The flow of oil through the United States is as vital to the health of the country as the flow of blood through your veins is to your health. The war that broke out in the Middle East in 1973 marked a new era in international diplomacy. Three-fifths of the world's oil reserves are in the Middle East. We need that oil. And from now on, our foreign affairs will be influenced by this need. Unless the international oil companies get enough oil from the Middle East, we will have shortages of gasoline and highway transportation will be drastically affected. The urgent need for energy can precipitate a world crisis. It can also damage our environment. These stacks of piping are to be used in the new Trans-Alaskan Pipeline. Work on the project was delayed for several years because it was feared the pipeline would damage miles and miles of the Arctic tundra. 
Now the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline is being built, and by 1985, it will supply 20% of our oil needs. But precautions must be taken to preserve the ecology of the Arctic. As we become aware that our sources of energy are not inexhaustible, we may take a new look at our society to see where we can cut down on energy consumption without lowering our standard of living. Transportation is an area where we may be able to make some sizable savings. Americans are probably the greatest travelers in history. Jet planes have meant that we think nothing of flying 4,000 miles for a business appointment. But as we have already seen, the automobile with its big inefficient internal combustion engine has become our main means of transportation. These boys will drive real cars someday. But the cars they drive may be steam driven or battery powered. Construction is another area worth examining. Today, we still erect buildings which are little more than a skin of glass stretched over a steel frame. To heat, light, and air condition these mammoth structures requires almost unbelievable amounts of energy. The twin towers of the World Trade Center in New York use more electricity than the entire city of Schenectady. And yet, this building is only used eight hours a day by 50,000 people, whereas 200,000 people spend all their time in Schenectady. Tomorrow's architects may design buildings which use energy more efficiently and go on to change the skylines of our cities. The United States became the richest nation in the world by using energy to manufacture and sell everything from soft drinks to precision instruments. But we also use more energy for non-essentials than would be required to power a whole agricultural society where people live without any of the things we take for granted. Imagine what your world would be like without the machines that use energy, like rockets, or motorcycles, buses, cars and trucks, airplanes, telephones, air conditions, dishwashers, television sets, and a whole lot of other things. Just imagine.